Ronald Willens is a physicist and inventor whose career encompassed academia, former professor of material science at Caltech, industry, researcher and manager at Bell Laboratories, and business, co-founder of the technology company Livingston Enterprises. Dr. Willens earned a bachelor's degree in physics, class of 1953, a master's degree in mechanical engineering, and a PhD in engineering science, all at Caltech. He joined the institute as an assistant professor of material science, and in 1964 received the Champion H. Matheson Gold Medal of the American Institute of Mining, Metallurgical, and Petroleum Engineers for his development of an entirely new class of amorphous metal alloys by a rapid cooling process. A half century later, these metallic glasses are still subjects of investigation and application in universities and industries alike. At Bell Labs, Dr. Willens worked on amorphous titanium silicon thin film super lattices whose electronic and photoelectronic properties made them useful in a variety of devices. In 1986, Dr. Willens co-founded a technology company called Livingston Enterprises with his son, Stephen Willens, and his son's father-in-law, Gerald Livingston. Upon leaving AT&T in 1988, he became Livingston's executive vice president and then served as the secretary of the company. At a time when the internet was emerging as the dominant global medium for communication, commerce, and entertainment, Livingston Enterprises was a pioneer in producing cost-effective remote access equipment and software that connected computer users and internet service providers. Lucent acquired the company in 1997. In his retirement, Dr. Willen supports the advancement of science as a philanthropist. This includes the Ronald and Joanne Willen Center for Nano-Oncology at Northwestern University. One of the first of its kind in the country, the center allows scientists to develop a nanotechnology-based therapeutics with substantial benefits over existing treatments, including improved targeting efficiency and fewer patient side effects. At the ribbon-cutting ceremony for the center last year, Dr. Willen spoke to the advancements in the treatment of disease that can emerge from a fundamental understanding of science and engineering. Quote, 10 or 15 years ago, who would have imagined that a tiny submicroscopic particle could be used to transport the means to potentially treat and cure many cancers? We are grateful that we are able to contribute to this endeavor where minds can do research, innovate, and stretch their imagination to find new frontiers to help humanity. Ron. honored by this award that Caltech, I thought when I got the notice it was a mistake, but I'm glad I got it anyhow. Uh, when I talked to uh, President Rosenbaum about, you know, about what I might talk to this audience about, he says, you know, there's a lot of people there that want to be entrepreneurs. Students come in and want to be entrepreneurs. Other people want to be entrepreneurs. And maybe you could relate some of the experiences you had that led to a, an entrepreneurship and a very successful entrepreneurship. You know, I started here at Caltech. It's been a very interesting trail, all the way from a bachelor's degree to a professor. Uh, Caltech decided that you know I was too inbred here. And they suggested I go away for a year to some other laboratory. Well, Bell Labs just grabbed me up instantaneously 
and I went there for a year to do research. Well, I was exposed to a whole different type of research environment. Uh, the type of environment that we now see in universities all over the United States that are doing research, was, which is interdisciplinary research, that you have people from various disciplines working together to come up and create new ideas, new solutions, and very interesting science. This was the model of Bell Labs. Being there for a year, I was absolutely enthralled with the people I could interact with. Uh, my field was solid state physics. Uh, it was the mecca of solid state physics. Uh, when I came back to Caltech, uh, Bell Labs came back and said, we really want to have you here. Uh, so I decided to leave Caltech. My long-term plans was to essentially be a professor here, grow a, a group, okay, and do re basic research the rest of my life. So I went to Bell Labs. It offered me the same intellectual freedom uh, to pursue wherever I wanted to go uh, in my research efforts, and it was an outstanding experience. I really enjoyed it. During the closing years here at Caltech, I also co-chaired a symposium on coupling research to production. It, that was a great, it was a great symposium, number one, but what came out of that thing was what I call the golden rule of entrepreneurship. It usually takes two individuals to create a successful entrepreneurship. Someone that has a solution, and as you walk in the doors here at Caltech from your first day on, you're learning to find solutions. And then someone that has a real need. And that, that's called the basic, my golden rule, and it's really the coupling solution. Uh, and it's, it, it, when I went to the industrial environment, it was the thing that I basically lived by. Well, Bell Labs was a great career, and then came a fork in the road. Uh, Judge Green decided he was going to bust up the a and t Bell system, and he broke all the operating companies. Uh, the operating companies provided the funds to Bell Laboratories that gave us the basic freedom to pursue research as we wanted to do it. Well, I realized at that point that no basic research laboratory has existed in a competitive environment. And I said, okay, where's your next step? I actually had an offer previous a couple of years before to become head of a physics department at a major university. And uh, I turned it down because uh, it was proceeding so well at Bell Labs. I just, I just enjoyed the life. And I looked around, and Bell Labs had really, as the outgrowth of my research, had really trained me well in understanding computers, and computer languages, and machine language, and everything that you had to really know about computers. So I said, well, maybe I'll take the step into the industrial world, and the thing that really would make best use of my skills, which is potentially just growing, is the computer software business. And that's where it went, because with my son, Stephen, we set up a software company that provided a solution and needs to major industrial companies because they had to come in conformance with two federal regulations, which are the workers' right to know and the tracking and reporting of chemical substances in the workplace. And they needed a computer solution for this. Fortunately, we wrote the software for uh, the three major platforms uh, that were being used at the time in computers. 
And the company was extremely successful. Many major corporations throughout the United States adopted our software system and were doing great. Then came another fork in the road, IBM. Well, IBM had a mainframe, a 360 mainframe, that was extraordinarily expensive to run. So two of our customers, Smith Klein Beechin and General Public Utilities, came to us and said, hey, could you make it so we could access your computers and run your software on your computers? And so I talked to my son, Stephen, who prototyped something up quickly to give them access and then designed a little box that became what we call the first port master. And that first port master was the genesis for what proved to be the remote access server for many people connecting to the internet. And when I say many people, that, from that little port master, we grew to about 20 different products, many software products. And in terms of the connection to the internet, we found that we had almost over 2,000 internet service providers, uh, major corporations, uh, phone companies, uh, all connecting into the internet, and the vast majority of this whole world used either our hardware or our software to give people access to the internet. That's still used today. Okay, in fact, many of you people have little routers at home and you're using software that we wrote many, many years ago in your little router at home. Uh, it's been an exciting life. It's been an exciting path. Uh, I couldn't have done that without the support of a wonderful wife. Uh, we've gone <laughs> back and forth across this country five times. She's followed me in my uh, wild places I wanted to go, and uh, been married almost 62 years now, uh, and a family that's hung together, but a wife that's been really, uh, the, as a famous song goes, uh, the wind between the wind beneath my wings. Uh, I thank Caltech for this great honor they bestowed on me. Uh, and now, in the final years of my life, um, we're glad that we've been in. Well, one thing I might say is if you're going to succeed as an entrepreneur, you know, we were eventually bought out by Lucent. We were going to go public. They came and said, don't go public, we'll buy you for an, a ridiculous sum of money. Uh, we shared our stock with all of our employees, as any Silicon Valley company normally does. And I say the greatest reward wasn't the money, but after the deal was done, I had employees come into my office and they say, we want to thank you so much. I can now send my kids to college. Others are coming in and say, I have a lifetime of debt, which you've just eliminated. That was my greatest reward of the whole entrepreneurship. <clears throat> Again, let me thank Caltech for this great honor they have bestowed on me. Uh, I hope that my wife and I will leave another further imprint on this world but in terms of the philanthropy that we do. Thank you.